Good morning to you on this Monday the 7th of June 2021 and it's good to see you this morning and thank you to John Morrison who has been leading morning prayer in my absence last week when I was on leave so lovely to see you again and as I say thank you to John for leading both morning prayer and night prayer in my absence last week and welcome on such another glorious day the sun is shining and it's lovely that you have joined us. It's good to see you. So as we begin our worship together, O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As the Father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are but as grass. We flourish as a flower of the field, for as soon as the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it more, no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord is from of old, and endures for ever on those who fear him, and his righteousness on children's children, on those who keep his covenant, and as remember his commandments to do them. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. So as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Our appointed psalm today is Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not be afraid, and though there rise up war against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and that alone I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to seek his will in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall hide me in his shelter, in the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me and set me high upon a rock. And now shall he lift up my head above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy upon me and answer me. My heart tells of your words, seek my face, your Lord will I seek. Hide not your face from me, nor cast your servant away in displeasure. You have been my helper, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, lead me on a level path, because of those who lie in wait for me. Deliver me not into the will of, your, of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up against me, and those who breathe out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong, and he shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. God, our light and our salvation, Illuminate our lives that we may see your goodness in the land of the living and looking on your beauty 
may be changed into the likeness of Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And our first reading, uh, we're still with Job, and today it is chapter 13. Look, my eyes has seen all this, my ear has heard and understood it. What you know, I also know. I am not inferior to you, but I would speak to the Almighty, and I desire to argue my case with God. As for you, you whitewash with lies. All of you are worthless physicians. If you would only keep silent, that would be your wisdom. Hear now my reasoning and listen to the pleadings of my lips. Will you speak falsely for God and speak deceitly for him? Will you show partiality towards him? Will you plead the case for God? Will it be well with you when he searches you out? Or can you deceive him as one person deceives another? He will surely rebuke you if in secret you show partiality. Will not his majesty terrify you? And the dread of him fall upon you. You maxims are proverbs of ashes. Your defences are defences of clay. Let me have silence and I will speak. And let come on me what may. I will take my flesh and my teeth and put my life in my hand. See, he will kill me. I have no hope. But I will defend my ways to his face. This will be my salvation that the godless shall not come before him. Listen carefully to my words, and let my declaration be in your ears. I have indeed prepared my case. I know that I shall be vindicated. Who is there that will contend with me? For then I will be silent and die. Only grant two things to me. Then I will not hide myself from your face. Withdraw your hand far from me. And do not let dread of you terrify me. Then call and I will answer. Or let me speak and you reply to me. How many are my iniquities and my sins? Make me know your, my transgression and my sin. Why do you hide your face and count me as your enemy? Will you frighten a wind blown leaf and pursue dry chaff? For you write bitter things against me and make me reap the iniquities of my youth. You put my feet in the stocks, and watch all my paths. You set a bound to the soles of my feet, one wastes away like a rotten thing, like a garment that is moth-eaten. And now for our canticle. All the earth shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. On that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing God's praises, who has triumphed gloriously. Let this be known in all the world. Shout and sing for joy, you that dwell in Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. All the earth shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One. Our second reading today is Romans and it's chapter 7 and it's verses 1 to 6. Do you not know, brothers and sisters, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only during the per that person's lifetime. Thus a married woman is bound by the law to her husband as she long as long as he lives. But if her husband dies, she is discharged from the law concerning the husband. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man whilst her husband is alive. 
but if her husband dies, she is free from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. In the same way, my friends, you have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. While we are living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are discharged from the law, dead to that which held us captive, so that we are slaves, not under the old written code, but in the new life of the Spirit. And now for our responsory. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. And now for the Benedictus. You have set us free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who's come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. You have set us free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this opportunity to come together this morning and worship. We give thanks for another glorious day. We pray particularly at this time for our farmers, those working the fields. We think particularly for those who may be anxious about having workers for the fruit picking later on and, and for the strawberry pickers and those that are now. So we just keep those all in mind that they do have the workforce to enable to harvest their crops. On this day, we beginning of this week, we pray for the week that had we pray also and give thanks for the week that's been for the services that took place yesterday now opportunity for those of us who've perhaps been had the chance just to be away just to have that opportunity for rest and recharging lord we give you thanks for that remaining ever mindful that so many folk just don't have that opportunity to get away and spend time with family and friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray this time, particularly for those gathering in Cornwall, and we pray for wisdom for all in authority of the G7 as they gather. We pray for wisdom about discussions about vaccinating the whole world global population, for the sharing of vaccines, that no one is safe until we're all safe. So Lord, we pray for wisdom there, 
for discussions relating to climate change, for discussions relating to tax, and that people pay what pay what they owe. So all that takes place, Lord, Dan and Cornwall, we pray for that today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for places around the world that are on our heart today, for the people of Pakistan, for those who have lost loved ones in that train crash, for those that are injured. We pray for those who are continue to struggle with this virus. And we said that vaccination programs can be rolled out for all. In a moment of quiet, we lift to you, O Lord, those places that are on our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our church, for Justin, our Archbishop, for Rose, our Bishop, for Joe, our Archdeacon, and for all those lay and ordained who minister across our benefits across our city and beyond. And we hold in our prayers, particularly those that are going to be ordained at Peter Tide and holding Jenny, our prospective curate, in our hearts and minds and in our prayers at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for all those who are struggling in body, mind or spirit this time. For those who are on our benefits prayer sheet, and for those who have asked us specifically for prayer, moment of quiet, we name them on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, for those who are preparing for funerals, and for those whose anniversary of death falls at this time. So Heavenly Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for today. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments, we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and those that you love and pray for, for this day and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us and thank you again to John for leading us um, morning prayer and night prayer last week. Um, as ever, much appreciated and thank you all for your comments. Lovely to be back and to see you again. Please do join us if you can for night prayer tonight at six. Otherwise, it's morning prayer in the morning again. God bless you all and thank you. Bye for now. Bye and enjoy this glorious day.